Let's now have a quick look at our course practicalities. First of all, I'd like to remind all of you that this is a six-week course that is worth five credits, which basically means that uh, you're going to be spending roughly 22 hours each week on activities that are related to this course. So this is basically going to be a half-time job for all of you. We're going to have lectures on every Monday. Then there are exercise sessions on Tuesdays and Fridays. And every Sunday we're going to have a deadline for submitting that week's exercises. The first thing that you will need to do in order to take part in this course is to solve the prerequisite test. So if you haven't solved this test yet, please do it as soon as possible. The deadline of this test is going to be on Friday at noon. To pass the course, the only thing that you are required to do is to solve our weekly exercises. So there is no exam, nothing like this. You just keep solving exercises, submit solutions, and that's going to determine the grade of your course. And the grading is completely based on the number of points that you get for these exercises. If you get 64 points, then it's going to be a grade of 5, and if you get at least 38 points, it's going to be a passing grade. You can freely choose whichever exercises you want to solve. You can solve exercises in any order, but there is a so-called recommended part. And if you follow this recommended part and solve all exercises along this part, you are going to get up to 77 points. And on top of these recommended exercises, they are challenging exercises that you can solve whenever you want for extra grades. And finally, there is going to be a contest in which uh, for selected exercises, whoever has been among the fastest solutions for these exercises is going to get one extra point. To solve the exercises, you're going to follow this kind of uh, workflow. When you're solving exercises of week X, basically what you're going to do during week X is that you're going to uh, write code, test your code, benchmark your code, and do preliminary self-service grading on your own. And after that, self-service grading, you already should have a good idea of what is going to be the number of points that you are going to get for this exercise, assuming you haven't been cheating, assuming everything is correct, assuming there are no bugs. And then you're going to submit these exercises to GitHub, and then you're done for that week. During week, X plus one, our teaching assistants are going to download your sub submissions from GitHub and then they are going to do the final grading of these exercises. If everything is good, you're going to get those points that you already got in preliminary grading. If they are, let's say, bugs, then our teaching assistants are going to give feedback and adjust the grading if needed. And please note that you can always resubmit uh, any of the exercises at any point during the course. It is uh, completely safe. You're never going to lose points by doing resubmissions. But please note that uh, for many exercises, especially exercises on the recommended part, there is going to be a deadline week. And whatever you submit or resubmit before the deadline week, gives you full points, whatever you submit or resubmit after the deadline week is going to give you some points, but not full points. But please note that resubmissions are always safe. You are never going to lose points that way. And also please note that uh, the end of week six is the final deadline for everything. You can't submit, you can't resubmit anything after week six. Uh, we're going to be using computers in uh, Mari, uh, Mari building computer classrooms. 
the classroom names are Mari A and Mari B, but uh, because we're going to do everything remotely, these classrooms don't matter that much. On the course webpage, you're going to find the names of all of these computers in Mari A and Mari B. And you can connect to any of those computers by SSH. And it's actually going to be your responsibility to find computers that are that you can use uh, to do self-service creating. In order to get assistance for solving exercises, we are going to organize two exercise sessions uh, each week. And of course, these exercise sessions are also going to be organized online. So we are going to be using both Slack and Zoom to provide one-to-one -one assistance uh, to anybody who needs help with uh, your exercises. There are two exercise sessions each week, but you're free to take part in uh, one of these, or both of these, or none of these, depending on uh, how much help you need. And uh, one very important point regarding collaboration during uh, this course. Please note that you are encouraged to discuss your solution ideas with other students. But any code that you're going to submit has to be written 100% by yourself. So feel free to exchange ideas on the level of, let's say, pseudocode or algorithm ideas. But uh, please be very careful to not do any kind of copy pasting uh, from any of uh, the other students who are taking part uh, in this course or from any other sources, let's say, uh, code examples that you can find online. And uh, again, regarding online sources, you are free to use ideas that you find online, but you cannot directly use any code that you find online. The only exception is the code in course material. If you can reuse some parts of uh, the code from the course material, this is perfectly fine. If you're unsure about any of these collaboration rules, please ask us to make sure you are not breaking these rules. And here is a list of important pointers uh, that you are going to need in order to successfully take part in our course activities. You're going to be using Slack heavily because Slack is going to be the main communication channel that we are going to use during our course. And the final important computer system that we are going to be using is GitHub. All of you, once you have solved the prerequisite test, all of you will get a personal private GitHub repository in this uh, GitHub org organization that we are using for this course. Uh, here is the list of people who are organizing this course this year. If you have any questions regarding any, uh, any parts of this course, whether it's related to course material or the topic of the course or our course practicalities, please feel free to ask any of us on Slack. Please try to use Slack as the primary means for communication. And please try to use public messages on the public channels on Slack whenever possible. You can email me if you for some reason have for instance difficulties accessing our Slack or something like this. But other, other than that, please try to use Slack whenever possible. This course lasts for six weeks, and the first three weeks are going to fo focus on CPU programming. And the last three weeks of the course are going to be focusing on GPU programming. Here is a checklist of things that you should do during this week. First of all, you should have already registered for the course in Udi. Secondly, you should have already solved the prerequisite test. If you haven't, please note that the deadline for this prerequisite test is uh, on Friday at noon. Then, you should 
join Slack if you haven't done that yet. You can join our Slack by just registering with your other email address. And then you can create a new user account that way on this uh, Slack workspace. Then, once you have sold the prerequisite test, you should have received invitation for your own private GitHub repository. Please make sure that you have access to this GitHub repository. Then, once you have access to this repository, you will find all exercise templates there, and then you can start solving exercises. And if you are following the recommended path for this course, you should this week solve at least exercises CP1 and MF1. For each of these exercises that you are solving, you should write code, run our self-service grading tool, and once this grading tool is happy with the solution that you have written, you should submit your solution by committing everything and pushing it to GitHub. Here is uh, now an example of the workflow for solving one exercise. You will first, in your own uh, clone of your own private Git repository, you will first switch to the right directory. Then you will open the right source file in a text editor. You will write code there. Once you are happy, you can try to compile it. Once it compiles fine, you can run tests and benchmarks. And if you are happy with everything, you can do self-service grading by using our grading tool. Then, once grading is done, this grading tool is going to create a submission file that basically contains the running time of your program. You are going to add both the source code of your submission and the submission file to your own Git repository. You are going to commit this and you are going to push this to GitHub. And at this point, it's very important to make sure that all of this uh, information is really available on GitHub. If you are unsure, please open your GitHub repository using a web browser and double check that all information is really there the way you expect it to be. And this is basically the workflow for, for instance, solving CP1 exercise this week. Once you have done everything like this, then you are done with this exercise for this week. Next week, our teaching assistants are going to have a look at your exercise. Uh, they are going to give some feedback if needed. And at some point during next week, this feedback will appear in your own personal beat repository. And then you can just pull this feedback from the repository. And if you want, you can use the grading tool to show the final score that you have got for these exercises.